Hey guys, my name is Shy. Welcome to another pick a card reading. This one, we are not messing around. We are tuning directly into the great central sun. That is at least how I am conceptualizing this, how I've been experiencing this over the last couple of days. And I know some of you probably are wondering what exactly I mean by that. And I might talk about it in the readings depending on what comes up, but I think there's really an invitation here just to feel into that. Um, the great central sun is something you, you're connected to all of the time. You just don't, <laughs> we don't typically notice it consciously. And in my experience, first you kind of feel into this concept and then you start to experience it. And it's not only, not until after you experience it, uh, really viscerally experience this connection that you understand it uh, in your mental body. So yeah, if you're wondering what I mean by the great central sun, try just just feeling into that and using your your intuition, your psychic perception, however you like to call it, to just get a sense, uh, your own personal interpretation of what that might mean. And if you're syncing up with this video, there, <laughs> that's part of the point actually of you syncing up with this video, it's to waken up to to your connection to the great central sun and all of the things that might mean for you. So it's a very independent thing. This There's a very independence-inducing energy coming through right now. And I think I'm actually being guided to not be too specific. I know typically I think of... One of the things that I, I do is to feel into concepts and then experience them and then explain them to myself, uh, understand them on an intellectual level for my own satisfaction. And then I can share um, that kind of understanding, you know, my perspective, my my personal perspective, my personal understanding with other people. That's something I've been kind of trained in different ways all of my life to do. So I'm really tempted to just explain everything that I kind of think is going on right now. But I think in this one particular case, um, I feel like I'm supposed to hold it back. So I guess that's that. <laughs> Let's uh, go ahead and get into your cards and see what particular messages are coming through for each um, of these different sections of energy. Hey, Pile One, welcome to your reading. Your guys' energy is very exciting. In fact, when I flipped up the cards, my Chihuahua came charging at me with his toys, trying to play. And I honestly see that as significant because he is very empathic and he knows what's up in terms of energy. So um, but the reason I say it's exciting besides just my Chihuahua's reaction is you have this freedom card sitting right on top of judgment and you're going into this emperor energy. Those are only half your cards, but they're kind of the big, like, landmark energies of what's happening here. So, let's see. Some of you might be seeing a series of synchronicities with dragonflies. So, just watching out for that. But look at these eyes looking out of the dragon's wing, or the dragonfly wings. This is your perception being cleared, your perception being being opened up, you know, opening the doors of perception, um, if you want to get Adels Huxley about it. <laughs> but this is really synchronous for me, and it has a lot of meaning beyond just this card, because for me personally, the past week or so, I have been with the help of my my personal like, spiritual mentor, who I get a lot of energy work sessions with, I have been clearing out what we're kind of calling slavery code or torture timelines. Basically, a bunch of energetic imprints that, you know, me and a bunch of other people have from going through lifetimes where we have been slaves, literally, or figuratively, but for a lot of us, literally, literally and tortured and just all of this suffering and 
the point isn't to feel victimized about that. In fact, it's the exact opposite. It is coming into an understanding that we chose to go through those timelines deliberately with our eyes wide open because of the payoff in the long run, because of having that experience and then what we learn from it and how exciting it is to break free from that. And the freedom, that freedom is coming through now. This is when, you know, for anybody tuning into this reading, this is when you are literally freeing yourself of timelines of slavery. And even if you haven't been doing any, you know, energy work or anything deliberately on that, you don't, you don't need to. Of course, that's really nice if you do. It can kind of smooth things out and smooth it along. You know, I've been getting a lot, a lot of benefit from this, um, this energy session. Uh, it's like a recording that I've been repeating and it's <laughs> been so helpful and I can feel it, uh, opening up my throat chakra. For me, that's where this is kind of, um, like clogged it's like bottlenecked and this energy is like bottlenecked in my throat so i've been clearing that out and but the cool thing is even if you guys haven't been doing that deliberately you've still been working through the same th themes subconsciously and since um other people in your soul group have been more deliberately working through these energy patterns then they're also assisting you and you don't need to feel like um, just for those of you who haven't been like conscious of this, that's fine because you have been doing other things, right? You don't need to have been doing this con consciously, but just know that, um, you know, other people have been and that's helping you and whatever you've been doing is simultaneously helping them on some area that, um, that they haven't been focusing on. So basically <laughs> ready or not, your freedom is coming. And this is like lives, lifetimes and lifetimes of slavery programming and of torture experiences that are you're, you're getting cleared out of and yeah so <laughs> here you are as the page of wands ready for your fresh start and ready to speak your truth and speak your passion um page of wands is somebody who really is fi like finally just ready to speak the truth. I don't know any other way to put it. There's, it can be a little bit naive, um, but in a good way, almost like the naivete of a, of a teenager. Remember when you were a teenager and you would just kind of say something without thinking of the consequences because teenagers, you know, are physically incapable in terms of their brain wiring to think about long-term consequences. It's kind of like that. But in this case, you're almost coming back to that type of archetype but with a lot all of this wisdom all of this wisdom so you st I feel like you started off in this kind of energy you know before you went through these torture timelines or slavery timelines and you know through that process becoming all kinds of damaged and jaded and all of that that comes with those kind of lives but now that you've gained the wisdom from that and learned those lessons now you're coming back to your more original self and this time you will be able to express your authentic self in a way that is most beneficial for you and also for everybody involved. And then right under this freedom card, we have a judgment, <laughs> which is that spiritual justice coming through. This is such a moment of the word ascension just came to mind. You know, this is getting to the top of the mountain. This is completing karmic cycles. And it's also like, I just saw a bunch of knots like spontaneously untie themselves and then float the strings floating free. Um, and I like this. Again, this is really synchronous for me because I pulled this exact card, like out of this exact deck, the same judgment card this morning for myself. And while I was thinking about going through all of this freedom. So <laughs> you guys choosing this pile um, are really, really like right on my bandwidth right now, which is really cool. And it's nice to know that we are all kind of uh, releasing just <laughs> so many eons of baggage all together. And I'm really drawn to this pathway here, this path going up into this archway. I feel like that is where you are going, you're standing there as the Page of Wands getting ready to go through this archway into, into, the, into the new beyond. I had, 
I'm just reminded of a comment somebody left me on some video and all they wrote was, um, what is happening? Like WTF is happening. <laughs> and I just laughed because I don't know like what they were asking about or what was going on with them. But I just, I just had this feeling, this impression of a person just having their mind blown or having the, the ceiling like popped off of their, of their house like metaphorically <laughs> and you'd just be sitting there going what the hell is happening like it's like the feeling I had when I went through my awakening going wow there's so much more out there than I could ever have possibly imagined and that is what you, where you guys are kind of sitting right now no matter how spiritually advanced you are no matter how much you think you know about the cosmos and dimensions and you know, energy and your past lives and your future lives and whatever. Um, it, it, there's just a whole nother level about to explode and you're going to be left wondering like a WTF is happening. <laughs> there's some kind of loving energy coming through for you. You know, we have Knight of Cups, the messenger of love your Sir Lancelot or your knight in shining armor <laughs> and nurturing these lions. But although this could manifest as, you know, romantic or other kind of emotional, like human level love for you, for some of you, that's not really the main thing I'm getting here. And this is more like divine cosmic <laughs> love love as an energy frequency coming through and this again lines up exactly with what i have been going through the last few days um let me think how do we even explain i just if i'm sounding kind of all over the place it's because i've been having a lot of really crazy activations literally over the last three days and it's all still like processing i'm currently processing this and in fact i typically don't make videos when i'm right in the middle of you know like stirring my cauldron like energetically speaking i like to wait until i'm feeling more settled but i really felt like this message had to come through right now so i'm doing it anyway <laughs> so i hope you guys can follow me along well enough but i know that you are right there right there with me maybe that is the purpose of this you guys are feeling uh just as much kind of it's not even really unbalanced it's like impressed with how many new insights you're getting and how much more perceptive you're becoming and how you're starting to sense frequencies coming in and maybe you don't know where they're coming from or what they're doing <laughs> but here you are and you're just trying to take it all in and you guys are, are handling it so for me I guess I'll just explain how this all happened in a linear fashion. So bear with me. So a few days ago, I was watching Batman Begins. And I, I've seen that once before, like years ago when it came out. And I remembered it being a good movie. And so I was looking forward to watching it again. Um, but I was not prepared by for how profound some of the themes that are like, re, you know, woven through the screenplay and I guess that's a whole nother topic but what really got me the most was the character of Dr. Crane or Scarecrow if if you know anything about this movie <laughs> this movie so but anyway the main thing that is important is that this character um this psychiatrist who is also a supervillain um you know was one of those kind of evil evil genius evil psychiatrist doc archetypes right who does experiments on his patients and stuff like that and he was so well played by the actor and was just so compelling. I was completely drawn in by this, you know, evil character. And I just felt this energy kind of coming in from outside me and like flowing into my the center of my back and then through my heart and out my chest, like as if it was coming like right in through my heart chakra channeled from somewhere. Um, and and like into this fictional character, it was this kind of weird two layered experience where I was at one, one level just sitting on my couch watching this movie and on another level feeling this like energetic flow from the great central sun through me and into this character. And I just felt 
all of this this love for this fictional character, which was, I mean, we all know what it's like to re- to really love our favorite character from a story or a movie, right? But this was, it it felt energetic. It it wasn't, you know, just like an attraction or love the way humans normally, at least the way I normally experience love, like for my husband or for my dog. It was like I could feel it was just a frequency that was flowing through me. And then I it, I kind of clued in. I kind of figured out that oh, this is what you know, people mean when they talk about how love just th- flows through us, that, you know, love is light, light is love, and it flows through us, and we can channel it and send it to people. And that was the, and I sort of, you know, n- had known about that. I know I've heard people talk about that and stuff, but I never really experienced it until this moment of watching this movie. And, you know, I know from just the way my journey has gone that I can have these really profoundly spiritual experiences in the weirdest moments, like watching a movie. And sometimes the movie isn't that good. It doesn't even have to be a good movie, but it's, it's just really funny how the universe like put these little experiences in my path or how I put them in my own path. And I never know what might set it off. <laughs> so in this case, it was Batman Begins. And so that was the first experience of that. And as through the three days have gone by, I've just been noticing, like I can turn this energy on or off. I can like get into this space where I can just flick a switch and open up. It's like opening up a conduit and I can feel this, this energy just flowing, uh, like from what I'm conceiving of as the great central sun or source. And I'm really, at least today feeling like calling source, the great central sun, because I'm seeing it more and more of, of a sun. Like if you think of our sun, orbit like we orbit our sun the sun orbits something else you know it has a sun and then our sun's sun has a sun and you know you get to the center of the galaxy well what does the galaxy orbit the galaxy orbits something else in the great superstructure of our um you know universe and this the galaxy clusters are orbiting something and then you know what is the universe orbiting the universe is orbiting source maybe and then what is source orbiting source i think has a source i think there are um many many sources i don't think there's just one source And I see all of these points of energy that things orbit around and that things come from as, as a sun, it's, it's like a sun and I'm just so much feeling tuned into this, the great central sun and feeling this energy of love and light. And I know people say that all the time, but this was my first time of really, really experiencing it really viscerally. And I think you guys are tuning into the same thing. That is why you got that whole spiel of my weird movie watching spiritual experience. And I know that I'm not the only one um, who is suddenly feeling like they can channel this energy from, you know, a place that is almost, almost inconceivable to us. You guys are tuning into that as well. And some of you might just be feeling really emotional or really agitated or can't sleep or just whatever. Um, see if you can kind of fine tune that, uh, like, you know, adjust your dial a little bit. Imagine you're tuning it like an old radio, um, and just get it a little more comfortable for you because that will make it easier to enjoy this stream of energy. And also know that you can turn off the tap too. You can dial it down. I noticed that I was sitting there and I could just turn it up, turn it up and like funnel more of this energy through me. And eventually I was starting to feel a little nauseous and feeling sick and feeling all like, okay. And I had to, I had to dial it down and, you know, I've been practicing for a while now on how to tune into different cosmic energies. And, you know, it's been a little bit of a slow road, but every month I make a little bit of progress. But this was like so much progress all like all at once <laughs> overnight. It has been like a new level of awakening. And this is what you guys are experiencing. You get my whole story because I think you guys are right there having the same kind of pattern. And for us, this is all culminating in the Emperor. This is where this is all going. It is to give you complete sovereignty, complete authenticity, complete confidence in yourself. Because once you experience source energy flowing through you like that, once you truly realize that you are an emanation of source consciousness, you are source consciousness, that that is it that is it you know like what can ever really bother you after that of course your life isn't just suddenly going to become perfect because you're not going to be able to maintain 
this remembrance of yourself as source consciousness every waking minute of every day because you wouldn't want to because you came here to be a human to have the human experience so the point isn't to you know completely come out of your human experience but you will always have this background knowledge in the back of your mind this experience of going right i can channel source energy whenever i want i can channel that love and that light immediately whenever i want and after that i mean you do you live like the emperor archetype even if you're just some poor person living in a shitty apartment somewhere you know you it doesn't matter suddenly that doesn't matter anymore because you feel so connected to the cosmos and you feel the frequency of your soul and you feel the frequency of your greater soul you know of your higher self of your oversoul and all the way through all of the suns all the way to the great central sun you're suddenly connected to the entire omniverse that way that's how that's how big this is <laughs> and yeah after that you know you you finally have your supreme confidence and you know yeah with the judgment card and the freedom card and the emperor card i can only assume you guys are also having major clearings to your throat chakra just like i have been doing um, this reading was for me as well as for all of you who are really tuned in, like lockstep with me. Anybody, anybody seeing this video is my deepest, my deepest soul family. And it is so good to meet you guys and know that you are also experiencing this right along with me. And I was just looking at these cards again. I don't know if I made it clear because I went on that big tangent, but this nurturing card in this knight of cups it's this offer of love or this message of love this energy of love coming in and i i really think that is just this literal channel of energetic like of like liquid love almost this this energy coming straight down from source this this conduit of source energy that's the kind of love it's like the frequency of love <laughs> which is above and beyond anything you know that you might think of in terms of loving your family and stuff like that it is like it's like fire it is like channeling liquid fire that's what that is to me <laughs> for this reading so i think that's all i want to say for you guys because i almost i don't even know what to say this message was so like explosive i don't i don't want to keep talking about it i think the purpose here was just to i think to really to help us connect to help us sync up because we've been having similar experiences and we've been having them in isolation we've been the only ones in our own little environment to be having them so it is enjoyable for us to synchronize in the container of this video for this and just to know that there's other people having the same experience that we are and it'll help us consolidate what is going on here so <laughs> good luck guys i am excited to find out where this journey is going to take us because this is this is the new level we are leveling up yet again <laughs> and thank you so much for existing and for doing your work and just for for being for being and i hope to see you guys again soon bye Hey, Pile 2, welcome to your reading. Got some good news for you guys, just looking straight off the top here. Uh, you've got solar plexus, so this is you really coming into a place of independence and confidence and tuning into your own authenticity and your own authority, followed up by abundance. Who doesn't love to see that? This is your money troubles fading away. This is your problems with how crappy you might feel your environment is starting to fade away this is you coming into your prosperity and this all culminates you know i'm going to skip straight to the end no cliffhangers here ten of cups i see this as even more exciting than the ten of pentacles would be because not the ten of cups kind of presupposes that you have already gained a level of physical abundance and we already know that from the abundance card and this includes your kind of complete emotional and more than that even your spiritual fulfillment and you know this card is emotional fulfillment spiritual fulfillment and being together sharing this fulfillment with your soul family your, your like deep 
nurturing waters. As you can see, there's, you know, the river flowing through this card. It is so like nurturing, like being in the ocean, like swimming in the ocean, just so deep, 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 deep levels of satisfaction and contentment. So I guess to rewind a little bit, let's see what has been going on with you and how you're getting to this, you know, land of milk and honey. Got the seven of wands, the eight of wands, <laughs> and the ten of wands. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, and right under the solar plexus, you guys have been working really, really hard. You have been dedicating yourselves to something, and it hasn't been easy. It's been feeling like a bit of a battle, I've been feeling like, like an uphill battle. Like with the seven of wands, that is literally fighting uphill and then even once you get to the top of the hill you typically find yourself uh, having to defend yourself or sometimes it's not even that people are trying to take something away from you or trying to beat you at something it can be people almost looking down on you for the fact that you've succeeded you know maybe people that you feel you've left behind um you know you might have had to leave people behind you or you know they might feel left behind simply because they're a little envious of you and so the seven of wands is you know, getting to the top of the hill, but realizing that the battle isn't over yet. So some of you might be still in that seven of wands energy. Some of you might be coming out of it, but you know, the timing is, you know, up to you. But after that king of the hill type of battle, eight of wands, everything quickly, quickly shifting, speed, movement, initiative, and it could be a little bit like things falling into place. If you imagine eight arrows all hitting the ground within like two seconds, it'd be like, boo, 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 right? <laughs> Everything hitting all at once, a bunch of stuff hitting the targets. Uh, but also with the eight of wands, you could be feeling like maybe you shot eight arrows off. Like it could be somebody applying to grad school and you applied to eight different schools, you know, rapid fire succession, just firing them all off. And now you're waiting uh, to hear back you know, from, from the schools and you're thinking like, what I applied to eight schools. What if I don't get into any of them, right? <laughs> 10 of wands. You have been working so hard and it is very interesting to get the seven, eight and 10 of wands. You know, we're missing the nine of wands, but clearly this with all that wands energy, it's so much fire and so much passion. But of course, at the end of that, you end up feeling burnt out. The 10 of wands is finally, you're ready to put down your burden Finally, the harvest is coming in, but it is, it's hard, you know, harvesting is hard work. And this, this particular 10 of wands card has such a spiritual vibe to it. I mean, this whole deck um, is the moon child tarot is my favorite artist. And it's so, it's so deep. It's so profound. And this 10 of wands, I feel like this burden might feel that it's, on the level of your soul, or at least on the level of your consciousness, like something has been weighing on you so hard that it, it's, you can't even really compare it to carrying a really heavy backpack or a bunch of bricks. It's soul level exhaustion. I can kind of feel something in my chest feeling like, conk, like way weigh, weighing down. Something has been weighing down. Maybe you've been feeling like you couldn't even be yourself, like your personality was being suppressed. Maybe like if you have to go to a job where you can never be yourself, maybe you work in sales, so you have to constantly fake it even because you, know, you don't want to be there, but you have to smile and try to sell something, right? Or maybe you're just in an environment full of toxic people and you're just constantly on the defensive and you can't ever be yourself. So I don't know, you know, this, this whole journey of the seven, eight and the 10 of wands is obviously going to be different for everybody, but there's just this vibe of, it's been so long and you've been working so hard to, to get to the finish line or to manifest some kind of project that you're just so done, <laughs> so done. But guys, the it's all paying off. Again, for some of you, it's paying off like right now. You already know what I'm talking about. You already see it. For others of you, you know, you're still kind of over here a little bit and you're coming into it, I think, over the next month or so. But yeah, Page of Swords, you're finally getting out of this willpower kind of energy. Did you ever feel like you were 
trying to forge ahead and you were completely out of out of gas and you were only moving forward with sheer willpower well you're coming into a a new idea a renewed mental spark you're going to have a new like a new idea or a new way of thinking about things there's going to be a shift in your mental body and it's going to take the pressure off of your willpower you'll no longer have to power yourself um from your sheer force of will you're going to have support from from the divine i just thought when i looked at this sword you can see she's holding this bright shiny sword and pointing at her third eye this is you might actually have an idea that seems so out of nowhere um you'll but you'll be sure of it and it's because you're it's like coming straight into your third eye it is coming in through your psychic perception and yes you have psychic perception even if you don't think you do you are more psychic and more intuitive than you can possibly imagine than you have ever given yourself credit for so this is all actually also an opening of your third eye and that is really cosmically timed because a lot of the time we have to go through these like really physical periods where we go through our human conditioning and we work our job in our society and we you know earn things the hard way and we do everything the hard way and we experience density and we experience you know slumming it like a human <laughs> and like a human in our physical bodies we really have the the physical experience and then finally when the ten of wands comes in to tell us okay that phase is done you can lay your burdens down now now you have cleared out all of that and that is when we start to realize how intuitive we are and how psychic we can be if we just start to notice things you're going to be noticing things and what you notice is going to start flipping switches in your mind and opening up opening you up to ideas you previously might have even made fun of you know you <laughs> like i used to uh make fun of anybody who even entertained the idea of aliens and you know now i'm super into aliens right i i, I love aliens <laughs> so something like that you know you might have thought that something was completely stupid in the past and just even ridiculed it and you becoming into just new ideas about it and now it, like like now it makes sense i see keep seeing like dominoes falling into place eight of wands that energy is continuing things are shifting so fast so fast yeah i i can't i can't get past this image of somebody flicking a bunch of light switch like tch, 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 or a whole breaker box you know when it's like a big commercial breaker box and you like can move a bunch of the breaker switches with a big handle because they're all connected like that like ching. you know it's like lights coming on lights coming on imagine imagine that there's a part of your brain that's been asleep this whole time you've been in this life in this body and suddenly that switch is being flipped major activation to your third eye if you're having headaches in the middle of your head <laughs> i would not be surprised because activations to your third eye um and i keep thinking about how every once in a while when i'm really deep in a, in a meditative state or in a lucid dream or kind of waking up from a, a nap <laughs> my naps aren't typically just naps sometimes i I'm actually traveling by accident when I thought I was napping. So that's probably happening to you guys since I just said that without really intending to. So be aware, I guess, of what's going on in your sleep state. Um, and even when you're just drifting off, daydreaming, and especially if you meditate, pay attention, you know, just be aware that if you think, oh, wow, something weird might have just happened. Like, did I go somewhere? Was I talking to some kind of being? Yeah, yeah, you were. <laughs> you weren't just, it wasn't just a dream and you weren't just imagining it. It wasn't just, you know, your imagination your imagination is your psychic perception so yeah there's that but what was my point oh yeah i was i kept remembering how sometimes when i'm in an altered state i can feel what feels like a laser beam going right out of the center of my forehead like right where my third eye you know where we imagine our third eye being and just beaming out um and i really think that is you know some higher dimensional being communicating with me i don't know if they're working on my energy or if we're exchanging information or if they're just helping me out but whatever it is uh you know i typically think it's a really good experience and if you feel something like that just i don't know don't be afraid to take it seriously don't be afraid to explore that because this is 
a major awakening of your senses as well. Yeah, your third eye and your solar plexus. And <laughs> those are going together because as you become more confident in yourself, then you become more confident in your perceptions hand in hand. That is really, really cool. And this is going to be opening up just doorways to abundance and love. So I don't know, guys, just lots of good news for you. The great central sun wanting you to know that the worst is over. You can put down your burden and a new exciting phase of authenticity, confidence, abundance, and perception is coming your way. I think that's what I'm seeing for you guys. So thank you so much for tuning in. I hope to see you again soon. Bye. Hey, Pile 3, welcome to your reading. You guys are doing shadow work. You're in a period of facing your fears, working and working through your shadow energies. That comes up really clear. We literally have the shadow work card. I got myself this card this morning, although it was in a past position. So that gives me a pretty good idea of what this is about. Um, sort of last week, I noticed that me and a lot of people around me were all having random fears come up kind of out of nowhere and were having weird, horrible things happen to them or just seeing them on the street or seeing them in videos. It was like, why is all of this mud coming up? What What is the purpose of this? I just, I couldn't get a grip on just why all of a sudden fear, fear was coming up, fear was coming up. And, you know, it took me a little bit to get a grip on that. And then I realized that, okay, this is just, this is just a shadow work period. This is just a moment of purging. So whatever's coming up for you, and I know you're feeling emotional because of this seven of swords. You can see the seven of swords is, it's like a ninja version of the card. You know, normally it's that somebody stealing something, somebody getting away with something. Here, it's just this being dressed up kind of like a ninja and looking like she might do something sneaky, but she's not actually depicted doing anything sneaky. But my personal thing with the Seven of Swords is that it's about your emotions getting the better of you. Your emotions kind of taking over where you would rather be logical and that is obviously really unpleasant. It's like you're trying to be rational. You understand that you shouldn't cry over spilt milk. You kind of understand that you should just suck it up and go to work. <laughs> you know, you, 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 your, your mental body is telling you to keep your shit together and to just be logical, be rational, and do what you're supposed to do. Be responsible. But when the Seven of Swords comes up, you, you just, you can't. Your emotional body is like busting out, like almost creating like a like pop in the bubble, right? It's like a spike of emotionality that disturbs the surface of the calm waters, either the calm waters around you or just the calm water that you would aspire to be if you could. The thing about these experiences with the Seven of Swords, and that go it goes hand in hand with, with the shadow work. That is what happens with shadow work when something you're afraid of or it's not always fear, um... Although most, most shadowy things boil down to fear, right? And if you think of any kind of pain, suffering, grief, stress, all of those bad feelings, if we really distill them down, what we're basically left with fear. So I'm going to kind of roll with that. But if it's not fear for you and if, if some other kind of shadow aspect just replace fear with whatever it is for you. So, you know, when our, when things we're afraid of rear their ugly head, it's not just to torture us. It's not for no reason. It is so that we can face those fears and process them and then ultimately let them go. And lucky for us, there has never been a better time to kind of face a fear one final time and then release it for good. I know it sounds kind of unbelievable to say, yeah, you know, we couldn't get over our fears 
for like 20,000 years, but now is the time. Now we can do it. I know that sounds unbelievable, but I'm only saying that because I have experienced it. I'm not saying that just to regurgitate what I read on someone's blog. I'm saying that because I have really, really observed that and experienced it on many levels. So, I mean, that's not to say that anybody should just believe me. (laughs) I, of course, never expect anybody to believe me. In fact, if you believed everything I said, that would be kind of weird. I just to be clear that, you know, I I believe what I'm saying anyway, and I believe it because I've experienced it myself. So. Yeah, your shadow work. These fears are coming up for a final processing. If you can um, identify whatever it is that you're afraid of, really look at it. Like shine a bright, bright light on it. Look at it. Process it. Love it if you can. (laughs) Forgive everything that needs to be forgiven. Then you will find that it can float away and you will no longer have to be hassled by it. I know you're ready for this because we have the Nine of Wands sitting right underneath this Determination Oracle card. You guys are feeling a little bit like these salmon swimming up a waterfall. If you've ever seen salmon do that in, you know, in real life, it's really crazy how they just keep throwing themselves up the water and how they even manage to jump. You know, it's not like they have legs. I don't know how they can get their little flippers to to do that, but it's just really awe-inspiring to me to watch salmon swim up a waterfall because of just the sheer amount of effort (laughs) and determination I have. They will stop at nothing. As long as they are alive, they will continue to try to get up that waterfall. And Nine of Wands is that exact same kind of energy. So determined, so fatigued, so tired of having gone on a journey. The Nine of Wands is a long, the culmination of a long journey and feeling a little bit defensive, feeling a little bit tired. Um, But here, this being in this particular Nine of Wands is really, is holding up. It's holding up just a little like these salmon, not going to give up yet. And look at this. You can see this person, their chakras are all lighting up. Their heart, their palm chakras, third eye, their soul star. These are the transpersonal chakras going up. We have this triangle here. These eyes. This is saying that this long road you've been on has a spiritual purpose. This is the melding of your physical experience and your spiritual experience. Um, And if it's not If it doesn't feel spiritual to you, just think of it as your personal journey, you know, your personal journey of self-improvement or whatever. But yeah, there's, so going back to this, this fear you have to face. I think you guys are pretty well equipped to handle it and you're very quickly going to realize that it was really here to serve you because Page of Cups and Transformation. The Page of Cups is you (laughs) feeling a little bit like this person. Look at how huge this area is. You know, would you feel intimidated walking up to this portal, this huge archway, this doorway going into this great unknown? It almost looks like a different world because, you know, you can see the clouds here are pink and stuff and out there it's night and this and the stars are shining so this person is feeling small feeling a little bit uncertain feeling a little bit like a child on their first day of school walking up to this major transformation we literally have the transformation card over here this would be like the death card in the tarot but without any of that death like fears right without any of those connotations that sometimes people have about the death card this is just about the transformation just about the positive positive transformation so this is you getting ready to go through that but i feel like before you go i see this archway as like a portal to a new world and before you go through the portal you have to face this aspect of your shadow do this shadow work because that is going to be left behind. You don't want to take any of that shadow energy with you. Yes, you went through experiences where you embodied your shadow, where you explored your shadow, where you experienced pain, where you inflicted pain, and you did all those things for a reason. 
you're now learning what that reason was. You're realizing how it made you strong, how it taught you lessons and how it made you more aware of who you are, made you more aware of who you really truly are. That is why you had those experiences. So that is why you want to be facing this fear one final time, because then you will kind of be able to review all of the lessons. It's kind of like right before a test, you know, in school, you have to review one final time just to make sure you really got this. It's consolidating everything. That's what you're doing by facing your fear one final time. Just making sure you got all the fine print, getting the last download, like the last developer update, and now you're good to go through the door for your fresh transformation. And just to be clear, I don't know if I express myself clearly with the Seven of Swords and the Shadow Work card, is that you'll know that moment of Shadow Work comes up when you feel that sudden surge of emotion out of nowhere. You could be having like a perfectly good dinner with your partner, for example, out having a date and everything's going great, everything's going great. And then they'll say something that just triggers the shit out of you. Or maybe it's somebody on the news or something you just thought of, but something will just trigger you and maybe you start, it reminds you of some horrible experience you had as a kid and you just start crying or maybe you just get really, really angry. You know, for some people, the emotion will be, you know, grief or sadness or despair or just any kind of shade of fear or uncertainty or feelings of alienation or rejection or um, what is that thing that people always worry about that I always forget? <laughs> um, a fear of disappointing others. Um, a fear of disappointing others. Whatever that trigger response is for you, that is when it's your shadow work moment. And if you are aware enough to recognize that instead of getting into a fight with your partner at dinner and ruining your whole date night, if you can go, wait, 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 hold on. This is that moment. This is, I'm being triggered for a reason. I'm having the seven of swords moment of my emotional body being triggered, no matter how rational I want to be, because this is the moment where I'm supposed to stop and figure out what is triggering me and why am I truly being triggered? Why am I being triggered? Why does this bother me so much? What do I need to face? What do I need to look at? What do I need to process? And if you can let your, and it, let yourself feel your feels, and if you can stop yourself from clamping down and shutting down and stuffing it down, feel it, go through the whole process. And it doesn't need to end up derailing your whole day. Um, you know, you can get through it as smoothly as you choose to, as smoothly as you feel ready to. And as soon as you're done that, you're going to be walking through the portal into your transformation. And this particular spread doesn't really give us any indication of what is next for you. So I would take that to mean that you are going to be walking into the unknown without really knowing what's around the corner. It's kind of, you're going, it's like looking to the horizon. Imagine getting on a boat and sailing off into the horizon. You know, you can't see what is on the other side of the horizon and you're not meant to, that would spoil the journey, right? You want to just go off into the sunset to experience the sunset, knowing that there will be a bright new day coming tomorrow with all new surprises and all new adventures. So yeah, I think that's what I'm seeing for you guys. Good work. Good luck. I was going to say good work. I mean that too. Good work on doing whatever it is that you're doing and good luck getting through your seven of swords shadow work moment that will lead you into this transformation and take you where you want to go. So good luck, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Hope to see you again soon. Bye. Hey, Paul Four, welcome to your reading. You guys are so much water energy. You, you guys are very empathic, probably very emotionally sensitive. Like you guys are very into your feelings. You're very, probably very artistic, very creative, very into living in your emotional body, uh, into experiencing your life through your emotional senses. I'm saying this because not only do we literally have the water card from this oracle deck, the Beyond Lemuria oracle, we also have the moon child as I'm sure you know, the moon literally controls the tides of the oceans. <laughs> so there is such, such, such an affinity for water here and emotions. And the challenge for you guys is 
facing some kind of heartache or heartbreak, heart pain, three of swords, you know? You guys know the three of swords, right? <laughs> it's the card that nobody likes to see because it involves a certain amount of pain and a little bit of suffering, but always, and I say this because I have learned this through my own experience, when you get the three of swords, that pain is there, like, literally to unblock your heart chakra. If you want to get really specific <laughs> about my perception of the energetics of it, it is kind of ripping out some gauze or some band-aids or some surgical stitches, you know, metaphorically speaking, to your heart, kind of ripping out all of the, the blockages, the gunk, and even blocks or protective shields, protective barriers that you have installed yourself on your heart, all of that is coming out and <laughs> unfortunately for us, the method through which we clear out our heart energetically is pain, basically. The, the pain has a clarifying effect and there's also just the fact that the pain is a, a symptom as well when you start doing work on healing your heart. So going, you know, learning to be a better conduit for love, practicing unconditional love, practicing forgiveness, those things, we're running more energy through our heart and we're eroding those blocks and those barriers. And it literally just hurts like emotionally, right? Especially for you guys, because you're so uh, tuned into your emotionality, your emotional side. You know, this is like cancer and Pisces energy, like all day <laughs> over here. But this is all for the best. The, like this Three of Swords is the only negative card you have here. The other cards are all fucking awesome. So I know that this is all to do with your life's purpose and your spiritual purpose because, look, you literally got the Life Purpose card. 22, Life Purpose. 22 is my favorite number, by the way. <laughs> and you're the in, going. You're climbing the stairway to heaven. Look at that. Going up the stairs, going into this archway, which is this portal to the new land. I've seen arches, I think, on everybody's spread. We are all going through a massive, massive portal. And you know what? I'm filming this on August 7th. And I haven't mentioned Lionsgate in this video because, well, I mean, not everybody really cares about Lionsgate. But maybe you got, maybe some of you do since I was felt like mentioning it here. So Lionsgate is happening for me, tomorrow, for some of you, by the time you're watching this, it is in the past. It's already happened. But yeah, Lionsgate, some significance to some of you. And that is a massive portal. And I think that is why I was called to do this reading from the Great Central Sun today and why I'm seeing so many portals because it's just so much energy coming through from higher dimensions and just blasting <laughs> all of us like a fire hose. For you guys, uh, the water is the water, <laughs> the energy is quite watery. Um, but that is actually going to be shifting for you guys. You're going to be getting grounded. And part of the, that is part of your purpose, your purpose. And this doesn't have to be a job or a career thing. This is literally your energetic purpose. To take your feelings-based, watery, intuitive, psychic nature and ground that maybe until now you felt like you have mostly just gone around floating on the currents, um, feeling adrift, feeling too sensitive to live on earth. Well, <laughs> down here you got the 10 of pentacles and this is, which is cool because it's Stonehenge it looks like, and the ace of pentacles. Love, love, love to see the 10 and the ace of pentacles side by side at the same time. I mean, not only is this an awesome omen for any financial, physical, material problems you've been having. You know, the Ten of Pentacles would mean that, you know, you're coming into your abundance and you're coming in your into your prosperity and your career success and all of that. The Ace of Pentacles is also a brand new environment. So this could be somebody, you know, moving somewhere brand new, getting a way better house, a way better living environment, a way better uh, financial situation and a better job. And suddenly everything is just Wow, not only is everything new, everything is also way leveled up. To get the Ten and Ace of Pentacles together, that is just so awesome. But I think the deeper message here, this isn't just about how you're 
physical manifestation of your life is going to shift and improve. It is about how you are in some way going to be grounding this, your emotionality and this water energy of yours. It's like, how do you alchemize water and earth? How do you bring your feelings down to earth? How do you get grounded in your physical body, in your human experience? <laughs> I actually just saw an image of somebody holding a funnel, pouring water through it, you know, so that you could get it into a bottle. That That's the metaphor for what you guys are going to be figuring out how to do. How do you take all of your psychic perceptions, all of your intuitions, all of your feelings. And I think for a lot of you, this will have something to do with art. You're being so creative, so sensitive, being able to use all of that. And finally, now you can create something. If you've ever felt like a frustrated, starving artist or a writer with a writer's block, just or you're a musician, but you just can't get anything recorded or you can't get any gigs and everything is just always frustrated and frustrating, like you're coming into obstacles and obstacles. This is when that finally... That is done. That is all those obstacles um, are no longer a problem for you. <laughs> this is the moment where you take your creativity and your sensitivity and your emotionality and your, your water and you ground it into the earth and create something with it. This is like the best spread ever for any kind of artistic project. And that can include businesses as well, because business is a creative endeavor, especially depending on what kind of business you're running, right? But... <laughs> Yeah, just creative projects, absolutely. It can also be manifesting more in terms of your your like family situation, uh, like relationships would be another way you can ground this. And if you think this is more just pertaining to your spiritual or personal journey in general, this would be taking all of your perceptions and feelings and ideas about your spirituality, about your spiritual journey, about the universe, and getting it all together, organizing your thoughts and coming to a much clearer understanding. And the other aspect here is healing alienation. For somebody who's so watery and uh, emotional, and I mean, I hope you guys can feel that I mean that in the best of ways. <laughs> and when I say emotional and sensitive, I mean this all in a very good way. It is all about your, your intuition and your finely tuned, like, feelers, <laughs> right? Your, your, your feeling-based perception. I don't really, you know, your empathic abilities, I guess is what we would say. And, and your empathy, your empathy and your empathic abilities. All of that is so finely tuned. And... If this is a spiritual thing for you, it is all getting braided together, like you're braiding ropes of water together to create something stronger, much more solid, much more foundational to your life and always coming back to this life purpose card. I would say be open to... If you have a pre-existing idea of what your life's purpose is, don't be too attached to that because your life purpose might be something else entirely and you really need to follow your intuition on this one. And you guys, I think, are already pretty good at that. But this could be somebody, you know, maybe maybe you're going to, just for example, maybe somebody's going to law school because, you know, they thought that was the best thing for them to do in terms of, you know, getting a decent job and blah, 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 blah. And even though, you know, maybe they just passed the bar and now they realize they could never be a lawyer, that they would, you know, rather fling themselves off a bridge. It might sound crazy to change paths so drastically after investing so much in their journey of law school. But if your heart is telling you to take a, take a left turn to go down a new path, that is what you need to do. Be very flexible here because nothing needs to be the same as it was yesterday. Yeah, and whatever, just follow follow the course of the river. You know how river just runs downhill and it follows the course of least resistance? That's what you want to do. You're going to follow it right through a portal and come into the land of all of these pentacles. And did I show you guys? Look, you guys got not only this golden coin, not only Stonehenge and four rainbows and this guy... He has a star in his hand. 
this is just this is where you're going just feast your eyes for a minute that is your trajectory this is where you're headed so follow your intuition and you guys already know how to do that and whatever this heartbreak is know that it is only there to kind of pull the plugs out of your heart chakra and help you go through a period of heart healing and once those blocks are kind of pulled out and cleared out your flow of love and your flow of creativity is just going to flow all the way into abundance and into the crystallization of your creative vision yep i think i'll drop the mic there i think that summed it up <laughs> i hope that was clear or made at least made a little bit of sense and just wishing you guys so much luck on your journey thank you for tuning in hope to see you again soon bye